All right, guys, super short lesson over notations. Um, we usually describe these using an inequality symbol, but to be more formal and to go up at, in the calculus and pre-cal, you're going to want to know the actual formal way to write out these um, intervals using the proper notation. So there's two that you really need to know, interval notation and set notation. Okay, we'll use both kind of interchangeably throughout the year. Okay, so we have three different types of intervals. Um, we've got your bounded interval, um, where you have points on both ends. Um, unbounded interval, um, there's a few different types in there that we'll talk about, but basically at least one end has an arrow on it. And then we've got uh, multiple intervals, where you've got like an interval, then a space, and then another interval, and you could have as many as you want, really. All right, so interval notation basically looks like you're writing a coordinate point. You're going to write the two numbers with a comma in between and you're going to enclose them in either parentheses or brackets. And that depends on whether the circle is a closed circle or an open circle. Okay, so we write the two numbers, negative 3, comma, 4. Okay, if it's an open circle, you put a parentheses. If it's a closed circle, you put a square bracket. And just like this one, you're allowed to mix and match. So anytime there's an open circle, you use parentheses. Anytime there's a closed circle, you use a square bracket. And that's it. That's all interval notation is. Number, comma, number with the, with the right brackets on the end. All right, set notation is a little bit more involved. So this one uses the brace. Okay, that's the curly bracket. Okay, and then there's some formal stuff in front. So you have to put X and then you put a vertical line. I'll tell you what all this means here in a second. Okay, but then after that, it's just your normal inequality notation. That's the one you're used to. Okay, so you would say this is negative 3, which is less than X, which is less than or equal to 4. All right, but then you also have to say what set does X belong to? So what numbers are we including in here? Okay, and as far as we know, based on this graph, every number in between negative 3 and 4 is included. So that includes all of your decimals, all of your fractions, all of your square root numbers, everything. So we put a little semicolon here, and we say x is an element of the real numbers. So that's like a little c with an extra, extra thing in there, so it looks like an e. All right, and this notation is in lieu of a whole sentence of words. So this first part means the set of all x values such that. Okay, so instead of all of those words, we put a brace, an x, and a vertical line. And that replaces all of those words. And then we say 3 is less than x is less than or equal to 4, and x is an element of the real numbers. Now, depending on what set you're describing, you may use the letter z. And say that would say x is an element of the integers, or the letter q, x is an element of the rational numbers. So that's why I showed you those letters a few um, lessons back. Is so when we do set notation and you're writing out these formal things, you have those letters to use, so you don't have to use as many words. All right, let's go to the unbounded interval. See how those work. All right, so unbounded. I'm going to start. When you do interval notation, you always go from left to right, just like you read a book, left to right. So I'm going to start with the negative two. That's on the left here. Um, it's got an open circle, so I'm going to put a parentheses there. All right, now if there's no other point and it goes off onto an arrow, we say that goes to infinity. So this is negative 2 to infinity, which is like a sideways 8, the infinity sign. And infinities always get a parenthesis, never a square bracket for infinity. All right, let's check this next one. So this next one is basically the same thing but backwards. Now remember I said starts from left to right. So this time we have to start with the arrow. Okay, so you have to signify which infinity you're talking about. The regular infinity, like we just used, that's positive infinity. You don't have to write a plus sign in front of that. It's assumed. But if you're going to the left on the number line, that's going to negative infinity. And that one, you do have to use the negative sign. So make sure you're careful about that. All right, just like positive infinity, it gets a parenthesis. Comma, it goes up to 4. 
and 4 gets a square bracket. All right, the last one has no points at all. It goes from one arrow all the way to the other arrow. So that is negative infinity to positive infinity, both parentheses. All right, for set notation, we would say the set of all x's such that x is greater than negative 2, and x is an element of the real number. Okay, unless otherwise stated, you always assume that x is an element of the real numbers. Okay, some problems will, will specify they only want integers or they only want rational numbers or whatever. So, but unless otherwise specified, we assume that they're an element of the real numbers. All right, second one, we've got the set of all x's such that x is less than or equal to 4. x is an element of the real numbers. And the last one, the set of all x's such that, and there is no qualifier. Any real number is fair game here. So all we have to do is say x is an element of the real numbers, and that's it. All right, last one, multiple intervals. Okay, so we're doing interval notation. Again, left to right still applies. So on the left, I see an arrow. So I'm going to start out with negative infinity. I'm going to go up to negative 3 open circle, so parentheses. All right, then the second interval starts with a zero, and it's a closed circle, so square bracket, goes up to positive two, parentheses. All right, then we need to connect these somehow, because this our whole answer is both of these combined. So the way you connect it is with a U in the middle. All right, this U stands for unioned with. This U is the same as an OR. So if you remember compound inequalities, we did x is less than 5 or x is greater than 7. This is the same exact thing. So in interval notation, instead of writing the word or, we write the, we write the letter u to stand for unioned with. Unioned is a fancy math term for or. All right, so how would that look like in set notation? So we have the set of all x's such that x is less than negative 3. Now, with, when you're doing the inequality, you do use the word or. We don't use the u. u only is used for the interval notation. Or 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 2. And x is an element of the real numbers. All right, so those are the two main notations that you need to know. And like I said, we'll be using those interchangeably throughout the year to describe different types of sets that we have to deal with.